I'm Chris Murphy, and upstairs from our KGW studios, of course, the Kink Studios, but not for much longer. In fact, Dave and Sheila, this is their last day together on the air here in these studios. We'll leave them alone, but we'll have a live report for you coming up straight ahead. News Channel 8's Chris Murphy joins us live from Vancouver. Chris, you've had some company today. That's exactly right, and here's why, Brenda. The ballots have to be turned in by 8 o'clock tonight. If you've mailed them, they must be postmarked by today, August 17th. This is one of the drop-off boxes here in Vancouver. One of the hottest races in the state is the 3rd Congressional District right here in southwest Washington. And right now, this is a real toss-up between these three candidates, Democrat Denny Heck, Republican Jamie Herrera, and Tea Party favorite David Castillo. The top two vote-getters move on to the general election in November, so this is anyone's race. And as for the turnout, the auditor for Clark County tells us he expects around 38%, which is about normal for primaries. But based on the steady stream of cars and pedestrians at this ballot drop-off box, you'd think uh, it might be a little better than that. Vote today. It's democracy. you got to vote. Everybody's got to vote. I think the party of no is going to have their butts handed to them. Ideally, you want to exercise your right to vote because uh, that's what everyone's fighting for over and around the world and their freedoms and this is just a one little small exercise that guys have given their lives for. Darn toot, man, I got everybody, the whole family right here. Bring them in on the day they, uh, they get counted, that way nobody can mess with them. And for real-time election results, all you have to do is click on KGW.com and then follow the tab that says election results. Russ, we'll send it back to you. Okay, Chris, thank you for the update today. We have News Channel 8 live team coverage as the search gets ready to resume. Nick Allard is tracking the latest weather conditions. But we start with News Channel 8's Chris Murphy live at Skyline Elementary. Chris. Let's get you caught up on the very latest, Brenda. We understand that at noon today, there will be a briefing on the search efforts again. This will be day four of the search for that young seven-year-old Kyron Horman. Crews worked late into the night last night. They scoured this area. In fact, they set out on a grid search and surrounded this school for two miles. Meanwhile, the district is getting ready for students. We're going to tell you about that in just a minute. Students, staff, they're all returning for the first time since their classmate disappeared Friday morning. Many were here yesterday to talk to investigators. At the behest of investigators, parents showed up with their kids to talk to them about anything they may have seen on Friday that might have looked out of the ordinary. Authorities are now calling Kyron a missing endangered child. That's a step up from a normal missing persons case, and they hope that classification will increase the public awareness and lead to more tips about Chiron. We've also learned that an FBI profiler is now involved in this case, along with a specially trained child abduction team in every resource that we can to bring Kyron home as a number one priority. The reported disappearance of a student from one of our schools is unprecedented and deeply troubling. And of course, with the sun coming up, that search is going to resume into its fourth day today. As for the school district, Superintendent Carol Smith sent out a notice last night saying that the school will have a counselor on campus here at Skyline, in addition to six other counselors and advisors for these students. There's also an automated call system that now is in effect district-wide here in Portland. That means if there's an unexpected absence, the parents will receive a call at home inquiring about that absence and notifying the parents, and all visitors must now sign into all campuses across the district and anyone who's visiting must in fact wear an ID badge. For now, the search evidently resuming up here in the Northwest Hills. We'll send it back to you live in the studio. Okay, Chris, thanks.